Good Sunday morning lessons, everyone. Listen, don't forget, you're wearing your mask. You are wearing your mask. Look, we just want to welcome you one and all this morning to the online services here at Bethel Family Worship Center, right here in the city of Durham, North Carolina, 515 Dow Street, where our pastor is none other than Bishop George G. Bloomer. So we want you to stick around. He's going to bring you an impactful, relevant word. We want you to like, share, and subscribe. Follow our pastor on his social media platforms. Everyone, listen, stay tuned. Have a wonderful day. Let's look to the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we praise you today. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up, Lord God. You said if we acknowledge you in all our ways, you would direct our path. Lord God, we come this morning looking for direction from you, Father. We thank you that you will speak to our pastor this morning. Lord God, that we will get knowledge and we will get wisdom, that we can go out into the world and we can use it, Lord. We can apply it to our lives. But we praise you today and we thank you because everything is moving by your power. You, that you did not give us a spirit of fear, Lord, but a power and love and a sound mind. Lord God, and we thank you that as we hear your word today, Lord God, we will put it to practice in our lives. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Scripture read in Psalms 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling has thou ordained strength because of thy enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou made of him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Good morning and welcome to Bethel's live stream. I'm so happy that we're here again. How'd you like last week? Uh, how did it bless you? It blessed me in ways that I didn't know that I had praise in. In ways that I didn't know I had praise in. And I find myself thanking God for his goodness, for his mercy, for the outpouring of his blessings, for just a Sabbath in my daily walk. That's a deep breath and an exhale. Something happening, relaxing. We're still wearing the mask. Hold on, let's see. Okay, still wearing the mask and uh, still washing our hands and still practicing social distancing. And we are um, bracing ourselves for the winter months that is coming in. I want you to continue to pray for it. Even when the media stopped talking about it, I started talking, I kept on talking about it, now they're talking about it again. 2,000, 2,000 deaths a day in the United States of America. And it has now become the virus of the unvaccinated. That's right, the virus of the unvaccinated. So those of you who are vaccinated, get ready for your booster shot and prepare yourself to live. I'm gonna continue to pray for you. Now, 
according to our schedule, I'm supposed to be ministering message number seven in the series, The Underworld. Uh, 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 but you know what happened last week, the Holy Spirit took over and, and we yield ourselves, we don't make him take over. We don't, we don't conjure up a takeover, but when he shows up in the room, we move with the cloud, we move with the wind, the way that the wind is moving. Our prayer this morning is for our children. Our prayer this morning is for our children. Our prayer this morning is for our children to protect them not only against the virus, but to protect them against all of these new thoughts and waves of thoughts that are coming their way. So we be in prayer for them. There's a scripture that says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And for me, I shared with you one time that when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I spake as a child and I continue to understand as a child until something happened to me. My prayer is gonna be for men today uh, to grow up, to stop acting like children, stop, stop being easily offended, easily bothered, take care of your responsibilities. If you make babies, take care of the babies that you make, all that kind of stuff. Guard yourself, don't lock yourself into one woman if you know you're a three woman man. You're only gonna create problems. Get yourself free and understand what you're, what, what, what you're dealing with. This is a message that comes from the underworld to the upper world to prep and prepare you. Uh, when a person has a testimony, the testimony should be predicated upon an issue, a crisis, and an experience that he or she has had, and then they share it because they got victory out of it. The song that is playing is Hallelujah. Hallelujah is believed to be the highest praise that an individual can give to God. But I believe the highest praise that you can give to God is yes. The highest praise is yes. When you say yes to him and you give your life to him and you turn your heart over to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, now, come, come on, turn the living room into a sanctuary. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah, in the morning, hallelujah, in the morning. It's morning time. Weeping and suffering may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shatadaba. Hallelujah. Oh, Kobo Shatadaba. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know. Woo! Some glad morning when this life is over, I'm going to fly away to a place beyond the celestial shores, and then I'm going to say, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, 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 I got a Shabbat in my spirit. Now, Father, we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. Yokes are being destroyed as your people are making a decision that things shift when we praise your name. That things shift, that atmospheres shift when we praise your name. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Father, today, let there be joy and rejoicing in the homes of the saints everywhere. And we give your name praise 
in the name of Jesus because you're worthy to be praised. He's all I need. God is all I need. Lord, you're all I need. You're all I need. Bread when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. Food on my table. Shield and buckler. Secret hiding place. Precious than silver or gold. You're all I need, Eshebo. You're all I need, Ekebo Sataba. You're all I need. Hey, you're all I need. You're all I need. You're all I need. You're all I If he's all that you need, give him a praise right where you are right now. Come on. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. And if you know that God is your major and master supplier, then you need to make sure that you stay connected to him. Build your hopes on things that are eternal, not on this temporal stuff that comes and goes and goes and goes. Now, 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 I, I'm not suggesting that you don't enjoy it. You want a nice suit, get one. You want to drive a fantastic car, get one. You want to live in a great house, get one. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. You better hold to his hand.
the living God fall fresh on me somebody need it right now spirit of the living God fall Now, God, break every yoke, destroy every yoke. Mm. 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 And give your people victory in this very challenging hour. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Those of you in the building, be the intercessors for those that are watching. Let's give the Lord a praise. Just a, just a, quick, just a quick praise, Father. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know It's the presence there are sweet expressions on each face and I know and I know and I know they feel the presence There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stain. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, The burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know, I know it was the blood. Save me. Oh, one day.
I think, I think every now and then, people just want to have church. They want to have church, they want to have church, and they, not, not talking about new church, they want to have church. They want to have church. They have church. Feel the presence of the Lord moving in this place. Be able to clap their hands and jump up and down a little bit and just let off all the steam of the world and invite the Holy Ghost and invite God to come in and make everything all right for a little while. Mm. I think that's what God is doing for us in this hour. thank the Lord this morning. Father, we bless you in the name of Jesus. There's none like you in all of the earth. We pray that the word that would go forth would be a word that you selected for your people's hearing. My obedience in delivering that word should bring us a corporate testimony. It's good for us to be here. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the brightest star, we'll know in that day to sing your praise as if We've just begun. There's no one that is more amazing than you. With our weaknesses, our proclivities, our strengths, with our sicknesses, our flaws, you still remain faithful to us. For your word teaches us that even when we're not faithful, you remain faithful for you will not deny yourself. I learned a long time ago to stop judging people's relationship with you predicated upon what I can see. For it's not a thing of works, it's from the heart. Install your anointing and your blessing in the heart of everyone that understands and sees that there's a need to give you praise. And we bless you for it. In Jesus' name. Let's see if we can make good of this. The Spirit World Series started lesson number one, Am I Living in Hell? Lesson number two, Crumbs for a Drop of Water. Lesson number three, Manifesting. You shouldn't be doing that without God. Lesson number four, The Secret is Outed. The Truth About Manifesting. 
Lesson number five, manifesting, renouncing demonic spirits. Lesson number six, hush. You're not supposed to know that. Lesson number seven is tonight. Number seven was interrupted by a mighty move of God, which I can still feel the residue of that anointing flowing on all the platforms that we're on in the name of Jesus. Today's message is the mystery of a secret. I want to start off by you reading something that I put together and then we'll talk together. Ritila, how you doing this morning? God bless you. I'm so happy that you're here with us today and to all the Bethel family. Uh, won't be long before we're all coming together again in person. But until then, let's receive the word of the Lord. And it reads like this. Powerful thing. A secret is a powerful thing. It can make or break you. It shows loyalty and at the same time, betrayal. One that keeps a secret to a friend is loyal, but one that keeps a secret from a friend, not so much. When one keeps a secret from a friend, it is often looked upon as betrayal. The secret is exciting and it is adventurous, but it causes you to cross over into the unknown. It is one of the anchors and foundations of the occult or a fraternity. Secret societies and exclusive groups are sometimes like God. He is mysterious and far past us finding out. I think that's what made the book, The Secret, so powerful. The title alone, the little blurb on the back, suggesting that the author knew something that works, that not many people know, and they weren't ready to di disclose hidden truths that can make you successful in business and powerful in relationships. The Secret promised to enhance your spirituality, help you to connect with the right mate and the world, hook, line, and sinker. The law of attraction, the power of the mind, the creative works of man and man's imagination teaches people on how to unlock the superpowers of humans. Millions of people believe it and bought into it and are still buying into it. The new generation has bought the secret under its new name, Manifesting. I think that one of the most powerful programs on uh, Netflix is a pro program called Manifest. And of course, Manifest has def uh, several meanings to it, but from the program on, on, on Netflix, uh, the word Manifest is taken from a manifest when you get on an airplane. You get on an airplane, every person who is on the plane is placed on a manifest and their seat number, where they sit, all of that is there together. And it's a way so that they can um, track the amount of people who boarded, amount of people who got off, uh, the destination to which you're going to. In the series um, Manifest on Netflix, which I think that every believer should watch, um, and you watch it with an open heart and an open mind because it is a program that's on television that is full of satanic stuff, but it's full of angelic stuff. It's all about the supernatural, uh, science and religion and all the things that goes along with it, and I, I, I give it a, a thumbs up. Do I agree with everything that's on it? I don't agree with everything that's in, 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 in the church. Shoot, I don't agree with everything that's in the Bible, and you don't either. You don't even, if you, you're looking up at me, you don't agree with everything that's in the Bible, because if you agree with everything that's in the Bible, you wouldn't have no problem. You wouldn't have to come to the altar for nothing, because you would do everything the Bible says do, like pay your tithe. So, uh, <laughs> in the series Manifest, a plane takes off, and um, doesn't show up for five years. Five years later, it comes back through a portal and the individuals are on earth. And uh, the 180 some odd people 
182 or some odd people, the, the numbers slips me now, all now have uh, a, a calling, some, something from the other world speaks to them uh, to um, help with issues and crisis. Um, as the series goes on, you find that it magnifies the person. If you're a good person, you tend to take the callings and use it for good. If you're a bad person, you tend to take the callings and use it for self-promotion or, or what have you. It's sort of like the principle of money. Money has a way of magnifying who you are. And if you're cheap and you ain't got money, you're cheap. When you get money, you become cheaper. It magnifies uh, who you are. What makes this series um, attractive to me and what makes me look at it closely is that I'm a spiritual person and I recognize the supernatural. I, I, I'm one of those persons who actually believe that Noah was on the ark. I actually believe that Daniel was in the den of lions. I actually believe that the Hebrew boys was in the fiery furnace. I actually believe that God delivered me from crack cocaine. I believe those things. I believe them. And as, as, as miraculous uh, that the world uh, would work with and call it a miracle, I call it the supernatural and that God works. The old Baptist folks used to say, the Lord works in mysterious ways. His wonders are to perform. So right uh, they are. So the, in the late 90s going into 2000, a book was released called The Secret. Out of the book The Secret, they began to reveal unto us the law of attraction. The law of attraction is a idea. It is a, it is a ancient philosophy that whatever happens to you, it happens to you through your thinking because you were the one who attracted it to yourself which is, which is kind of crazy because it's almost suggesting that if you have cancer, you attracted the cancer to yourself. If, 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 if you were in a fire at home, you attracted the fire to your, to, to, to your home. If, you, if your tire blew out, you, you, you attracted that. That's horrible. Now it would, be, it, would, it would be real, real hot if I could attract to myself the numbers to the lottery or if I could walk through the walk through uh, any casino and touch machines and knows which one is going to hit because I was able to uh, 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 attract that. But like anything else, time plus time equals influence. And the more you hear something over and over again, it develops a belief system in you, which we call faith. It's just as simple as that. Um, uh, we traveled around the world to different countries and in France and, and, and had, 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 had to have interpreters. And when I began to minister and ask people of color who are in different countries, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the dark Chinese, the dark French, the, uh, the, the, the black folks that are in other countries, um, um, don't pull that mole on your neck. Even in their language, they say, because you're going to bleed to death. It is, it, is, it, is, it is an amazing thing how that hearing that thing over and over and over again has um, established a doctrine, a, a, a thought process that people actually believe in. So time plus time equals influence. And the more you hear something, the scripture says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. I like to quote it this way, faith cometh by hearing and by hearing and by hearing and by hearing. It don't even have to be the word of God. You just hear it. You just keep on hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, and you begin to develop and start this belief system that is there. And so the law of attraction has worked for at least 30 million people that we know, and if it didn't work for them in, in process, it worked for the writer who had 30 million individuals to purchase the book. 30 million people purchased the book, The Secret, at the good old price of $23.99. You do the math. After a day like that, after 
30 million people at $24.99 purchases your book, I think you could attract any law you want to attract to yourself. I don't think there's a car that you can't buy or a jet that you can't fly on or an apartment that you can't get. All of this begins to happen. And then she made her way to the number one talk show at that time, which was Oprah Winfrey. And Oprah had the golden touch that whatever Oprah touched just blossomed. So 30 million copies sold, and then you go to Oprah. The numbers can't be numbered right now, and the book is still on the bestsellers list and is still selling. And now our young people have picked it up, but they don't work it from the secret standpoint of view. They work it from manifesting, manifesting, or a manifesto, a document to which there is a name or principle written down. I want to do this very, very quickly. I just have a few more moments. Um, I'm inspired, a part of the message is inspired to write or, or to, to talk to you about is because I've been having some conversations with my grandson who, for me, uh, when he was born, he was like my son. Uh, real, real briefly, I'm driving in the car one afternoon. I look through the rear view mirror and I see a, a car seat sitting in the back of the car and a little kid sitting in there with a baseball cap on. And then I look again and he's gone. And I'm driving again and this happens. This happens about six or seven times. Then I'm in New York City and I get the telephone call from my wife then and she says, your daughter's pregnant. So I have this, this, this vision in the car, this little guy sitting in the back with a baseball cap on, bouncing his head. And of course, the child is born. His name is Justin. And about a year later, I am driving in my car and I look through the rear view mirror and he's sitting in the, the seat with the baseball cap on and the whole, it shook me to the point because I had this quick moment where I had a flash into the future. And I promise you that every one of you that is watching and every one of you that is in this room and every one that you would, would view, barring none, all of us have visions like that. We don't, we don't, we, we, we don't, a lot of us don't write them down. A lot of us don't, uh, 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 don't um, regard them. But we have, and, and I'm not talking about a dream. I'm talking about an open vision where it was a daydream for a moment, a, a, what the world refers to as a deja vu. You, you enter into something and then you wind up someplace and you say, or, 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 or your spirit has traveled to a place or to an area that you have never been before, and then a year later, you step in the room, you say, I'm freaking out because there's something that is very, very familiar about where I'm at. I have, have it. And you say, well, I know I've never been in Oregon before, but I've been in this room before. And, 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 and when, when, when the children of God would begin to really, really believe that we are made in the image and the likeness of God, and the only hindrance that we have, total hindrance that we have, is the flesh. But our soul and our spirit has the ability to travel and to gather information. And if we spend time with God or we spend time with meditation and becoming one with our inner self, a lot of times when people are talking to you, you'll be able to say stuff like this. I knew you was going to say that. I don't know. I don't know. I was just thinking exactly what you... What, 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 what you say? And this ain't no spooky voodoo witchcraft stuff. This is who you really, really are. And a lot of times because we want something so bad and we want so much of it, the Lord is telling us, don't fool with that heifer. But she's thick. She looks good. We're having all the visions that this heifer is going to take a full head of hair that I have and make it as bald as I am if I deal with her. But our flesh decides, and not just for the guy, for the lady also. The Lord said, don't fool with that joker. He is going to make you bald. You better own wigs. You're going to lose your substance if you fool with that. We're all wired Watch this, with the ability to see tomorrow, all of us. 
I don't care if you're saved or unsaved, I don't care if you're atheist or agnostic or Buddha or Krishna or Catholic or whatever you want to call yourself, all of us who was made in the image and the likeness of God, and if you're breathing, you were made in the image and likeness of God, you possess this ability to see tomorrow and sometimes to step back into yesterday and correct things so the day after tomorrow won't be as bad as it was going to be. And it requires you understanding that that word on the screen, secret and mystery, is the same word. But what you need is a key to unlock the secret that is open to someone else that refuses to give you access to what they know. It's, 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 it's amazing. I don't want to tie your brain up too much, but it's amazing. And I want to say this one more time, and then I'm going to go to the scripture, and then we'll be done for the day. That you are about to have a, a series of open visions, of open visions, visions about tomorrow, about the next day, about the day after that, and it's going to be up to you as to what you do with it and how you deal with it. But here, here, here's the frightening part, and I'm literally talking to those of you that are watching, and I'm talking to those of you that are in this room under the sound of my voice today. I'm, te I'm telling you this. You'll have to give an account to God for the vision that he showed you that you did nothing with. Because the vision itself is a key that unlocks a mystery or a secret in your life. And the wrong person in your life can lock you out of the mystery. The wrong acquaintances, being at the wrong place at the right time could offset. And it's amazing to me that the world at large has tapped into it and is getting it to work for them and believers are behind trying to catch up to the world. Say what you want to say, be mad, be upset, all of you gospel artists, all upset and bothered and, and agitated that Kanye has found the secret. Now, well, wait a minute, God didn't just give it to Kanye. He gave it to everyone who has musical abilities. Every one of you that's in that pit. Every one of us that can read, every one of us that can sing, every one of us that can write. When God opened up the heavens, he opened it up and the rain began to rain on the just as well as the unjust. But whoever was open to receive it was the ones who got it. And now when the gospel artist started crossing over and climbing the charts, the sinners said nothing about it. It was the Christians who said, y'all need to stop that. Now that the secular artists are crossing over and climbing the Christian charts, the Christians got a problem with it. Well, not most of the Christians, most of the Christian writers have got a problem with it. And one of the things you cannot deny, I don't know who Kanye spends time with, I don't know if he talks to God or talks to Buddha or talks to demons, but what I do know is that when I hear his music, my hand goes up, it doesn't go down. My hand goes up, my heart is lifted and I'm pulled into the prophetic part of myself that makes me wonder, makes me see what I couldn't see moments before. I'm not promoting Kanye, I'm just telling you that if my people will not praise me, the scripture says the very rocks and the trees are going to cry. So what we're gonna see is more and more inspirational, gospel, spiritual, supernatural things coming from people who don't go to physical church buildings because they're tired of the church crap. And yet God trusts them because if you could take 12 hours and send the secret text out and fill up Central Park with 80,000 people in 12 hours. 
I'd say that's an anointing. <laughs> I'd say that's a mighty gift and, 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 and I'd like to have it. I'd burn some candles to get that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, God is trying to return us back to the supernatural. And that word secret there suggests that what he's about to do is not for everybody. It's just for everybody that knows how to access the kingdom. Deuteronomy 18 verses uh, 9 through 15, uh, giants, it says this. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. There, not, there shall not be found any one of you that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, which was a ritual that the, uh, in the biblical days, they took their children and they offered them up to idol gods by burning the flesh of their children. So don't enter into that. Uh-huh. Or that uses divination. Or uses divination. You know what divination is. Divination is the fortune-telling realm of the spirit. Or it is dividing. And in the Bible days, when they were in the wilderness, they would climb up and get a branch off of a tree, remove the leaves from it, and use the Y part of it, and use it, and focus their attention in order to find hollow spaces in the ground so they could dig wells. So that which was used for good purpose, somehow or another got perverted. Watch this here. Or an observer of times. He says, or someone who is into astrology, the observer of times, almanacs and, and horoscopes and etc. But wait a minute, isn't horoscopes in the Bible? Of course it is. Isn't the stars in the Bible? Of course it is. Uh, who was the prophets who located Jesus? I don't know who they were because there was no prophets that located Jesus. The Magi's was the ones who located Jesus and they were astronomers, warlocks, and witches who saw the star that was in the east. Does it sound familiar? We're beginning to deal with that those who are anointed to bring God's word is so caught up in other things that God has now got to take people with questionable characters to show forth his mighty hand. If the church was full, you'd hear amens and shoutings and the blood of Jesus all over this place. People to begin to begin, begin to manifest by loosing and binding because it's true. This is where we are and this is what's happening. Uh-huh. Or an enchanter. An enchanter. Or a witch. A witch. Or a charmer. A charmer, a person who uh, uh, can put you under hypnosis. Uh -huh. Or a consultant with familiar spirits. A consultant with familiar spirits. This is a person who talks to people who talk to the dead. Who talks to people who talks to the dead. Uh -huh. Watch or, this. or a wizard. A wizard. Or a necromancer. A wizard is a male witch or a necromancer. So there's a great celebration that is going on in, uh, in the movie industry with Harry Potters and uh, the, the uh, click, uh, click bait and, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, manif manifest and true blood and uh, those that have been left behind and all this Game of Thrones. We're entering into a time of the supernatural where the underworld refuses to remain secret and is coming up showing you that we have power just like you. The problem is, the church doesn't know that it has this power. Read. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of time and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Verse number 15 says, The Lord God will raise up unto thee prophet, a prophet, I'm going to say prophets, from the midst of thee and of thy brethren, like unto me, 
uh -huh. and you shall hearken unto it. And I believe that I'm one of those prophetic voices in the last days. And in order to be a prophet and to prophesy, you have to be willing to be called a false prophet until the prophecy that you prophesied came to pass. You have to be strong enough to take fiery darts and accusations and be knocked out of the play and be called all different types of things. And then the Lord shows up with his supernatural power and proves that his hand is on you. God doesn't use supernatural people. He uses natural and put his super on them. And that's what makes them naturally super and super natural. And this anointing is resting on the lives of God's people. You're gonna see in this hour and this day, a lot of young people who are called into ministry and uh, 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 receive a calling of God on their life. And once they get the calling of God on their life, they come under a tremendous attacks. So they take the calling and put the calling aside and now they're in trouble. They don't ever have to sin another day in their life. They don't have to fornicate, commit adultery. They don't have to drink, smoke. They don't have to do anything. All they have to do is deny the call that God has placed on their life. So incidentally, if those of you that are caught up on the series of Manifest, you know that each day or each week, uh, different ones receive different uh, premonitions. And these premonitions lead them into certain areas. I'm telling you that if you're spending time in prayer with God, I'm gonna use the word premonition also, you get premonitions, you get visions, you get a feeling that this is that, you get a feeling that this, sometimes in the midst of all of the rough and rugged things that are happening and transpiring in your life, you feel at that moment that things are going to get better. I know that's how I feel. Sometimes I'm awakened by God, two, three o'clock in the morning, I call one of the elders or one of the overseers and I say, check on such and such a person. And when they do it, we find that the person is on their way to the hospital or sick. I remember a one of our precious daughters in the ministry, I was walking across the pulpit during the conference and I stopped and I said, where is such and such a person? And they said, uh, uh, um, uh, we'll check. And uh, they went and they checked and I kept on speaking and they gave me the word back. She was just rushed to the hospital. This happened while the service was going on. She was just rushed to the hospital. I said, rushed to the, said she's just rushed to the hospital. And a preacher jumped up and he says, well, it's just gonna believe God that the, the miracle's gonna be fine. And in my spirit, there was a twist and I put my hand out like that to him to, 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 to hold him, to tell him hold. And I walked over there and Apostle Shirley Brown and the preachers were, were all over there, Adelia and, and Bishop Brown and all of them was over in that section and I went over to the section over there and I whispered to them, I said, we're gonna have a funeral in this church. It was immediately the Lord spoke to me and told me through this secret key passage of something that was going to happen tomorrow. A few months ago, uh, I uh, called uh, Overseer King late in the nighttime and I said, I want you to do something for me. He said, give me a few moments, let me, let me wake up. And I said, please forgive me, but this is on me strong. I want you to call Nina Massey and I want you to uh, tell her to start hanging around me again. I sense something wrong. I sense something dark, something dark. And he called her and he told her and she says, mm-hmm. And then my daughter called me and she says, uh, 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 Daddy, did you call Nina and tell Nina? I said, no, I had King to call. She said, oh, oh, because you know, you scared her. She's really, really scared. She's really, really frightened. Well, here was a girl who grew up, uh, who was brilliant in her thinking, a mathematician, an uh, 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 educator, uh, grew up with a mom and a dad who lived in old, 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 uh, um, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Hope Valley. Now, Hope Valley back in the days where all black people would hope that they could ever move to. In fact, for 30, 40 years ago, Hope Valley's all the mansions was the, where the golf course was at on Hillendale. I mean, that was life back there. And they were able to secure a home in Hope Valley. That, 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 that's big time. And when they left, they left dad left later, the mama left first, the dad left, and they went to be with the Lord and left her well taken care of. But vultures flew in, in these dark forces flew in through loneliness, disguised as a lover, and depleted every bit of legacy and everything that was belonged to the young lady. And just a few days ago, we funeralized her. That thing 
bothered me because my premonition, my vision, where God showed me that had we been able to throw our arms around her and to come closer, she would have been able, probably would be here with us today. He that dwelleth in the secret places of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in him will I trust. I'm telling you, Bethel, that this message this morning is designed to get you to take a few moments after praying, after praying, take a few moments, write the name of the person you're praying for down, write your daughter's and your son's names down, and take a few moments and think on what is lovely, what is pure, what is just, what is kind, what is of a, a, what is of a, of, 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 of a good mind, of a good heart, and pray that God would give you vision so that your sons and your daughters can be protected under the wings of your prayer life. That's what this is about this morning. He said, when you go into the other places, do not do what they do. God doesn't want us burning sage. He doesn't want us chanting names of people. He doesn't want us in scripting. He doesn't want us leaving faith and finding, uh, trying to use the law of attraction to bring things to us. Uh, for the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I fear no evil for he is with me. That's the God that I serve. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He's the provider for me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why? Because we're protected by God. And I give you a secret today. I give you a secret today that when you pray and seek the face of God, he whispers things into your spirit that gives you the up on tomorrow. Every person watching right now, I'm going to pray in about two minutes. I'm going to pray a prayer. And this prayer is going to get the dirt out of your third eye. Allow your prophetic eye to be open again and then unstop your spiritual nostrils, which is your level of discernment so you'll be able to smell things. Note, notice what he says in, in, in Psalms 91, verse number three. He says, surely he shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler. The snare of the fowler. That means the trap of the bird catch, catcher. And he says, from the noisome pestilence. Noisome means stench. It means stinky. It means something that has a foul odor. And pestilence is plague or pandemic. Surely he shall deliver us from this and his shield and buckler shall be the truth. That you're going to walk around with a, a reflex that blocks things that comes to your way. This is going to be a jerk reaction. The old saints used to do it all the time. When spirits would come, they, 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 they would quicken. It almost looked like they were, they, they, they were fighting. Or why? Because they understood the secret. So this week, over the next few days the next seven days you're going to have dreams and visions if you embrace this prayer that i'm going to do in about a minute and 12 13 seconds uh, you are going to begin to see what is good for you you're going to begin to see what is bad for you you're going to begin to see what is good for your household you're going to begin to see yes 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 and then after you see you're going to be able to say and then after you say you'll see it you'll see it say it see it you will see it in your spirit you'll say it and then you'll see it in the natural because god is going to equip you with that level of the anointing witchcraft and sorcery uh, uh, has uh, changed its clothes. It's no longer spooky and scared. It's become trendy and what people like to do and like to be involved in. But those that know who their God is, you know who your God is, you're about to have a Mount Carmel experience that the God of, that be God answer by fire. And the fire of God is coming. Your eyes are going to be open, your nose is going to be unstopped, and your hands are going to be anointed. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?
a new song, a brand new area and atmosphere you're moving into right now. On your job, dealing with people, your gifts and your talents, all are now being fortified sevenfold, seven times as much, seven different parts of your ability to function in the realm of the spirit. All of that, the season of seven is happening to you right now. With your eyes closed, now open them. For the scriptures teaches that the eyes are the gateway to the soul. Hold your breath for a moment. Now release it and breathe out of your nostrils. For nostrils represents discerning, being able to sniff and smell things out. Close your mouth, open it now. You now have the ability to speak things into existence that are around you. And don't be in such a haste to do it. How long does it take for an oak tree to grow? Just because it didn't happen in two days doesn't mean it's not gonna happen. The seed of your word has to grow down before it can grow up. One must never run into running. It takes walking and crawling before you get there. Father, I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for the testimonies that are about to come our way because the saints of God are about to see visions and dream dreams and enter back into the alignment of the connection and realign their ears with the voice that you have assigned them to. This morning, as we leave the month of September and go into the month of October, which is the month of death, cause resurrections to take place in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. You know, I really feel good about this message this morning and what makes me feel good about it is that while I was ministering, I saw eyes opening up and I saw people having a second thought about the thoughts that they've been having. And they're learning this morning that the thoughts that you've been having are holy, they're God, and it's the Lord warning you to get in front. I pray that this message will be as successful this week as the miracle of worship was last week. I believe the Lord led us into worship so that we can install this gift this week in the name of Jesus. Remember, we're in the season of reset and start. Well, your prophetic has been reset. Now you can start. Your gift is about to make room for you in the name of Jesus. I pray for every person who needs salvation, who needs the Lord in your life, and you might be watching right now. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of your saving grace. Save me. Save me. That's all you have to do. Save me. You got to do all of that. Save me. He know he's standing at the door knocking. He's trying to get in. He's trying, he trying to get in more than you was trying to let him in. Have you received them? Just say, come in. Come in, come in. If thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Save them now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on. Christ. 
I don't know why, I don't know why, but I can't let it go and I'm trying to let it go. But somebody, starting right now, is about to have daydreams. And great night dreams. And God is going to show you, keep you ahead of the battle. You'll know what to do. That same little boy that sat in the back seat of the car that was riding with the hat on, one year old when I saw him. started to say things at times we didn't understand and things would happen. He came over to the house and he was walking around the house. I was downstairs was making a sandwich. And he walked into the kitchen. He said, can you make me one? I said, I'm making one. You can, you, you can have one. He's about eight years old then. He said, maybe one of those, maybe one of those. He said, uh, Papa, what did Jake say to you when he called you? I said, huh? What? I said, I ain't spoke to him. I said, don't try to be no prophet. Ate a sandwich, we moved around. He, he said, man, you're gonna be, you, you're gonna blow up. You're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be on that stage. I said, you been talking to your mama? He said, no, my mama just said, I don't know. That night, Terry, this is Jake's called me. He said, I'm inviting you to do the, I went to little Justin, I said, what is this? What is this? Every time the service would be over, he would run, get one of my ties, wrap it around his head, take the microphone and start speaking, start preaching. We, he don't do that no more. And that's why I say, they grow out, but they come back in. Shh. And I can tell you story after story after story after story. And I'm telling you, God is gonna stir up those gifts on the inside of you. Last week, I started calling sons and daughters in ministry and saying this to them. The anointing of the Lord is on your life. Oh, what are you going to do with the anointing? Ah, shut up. What are you going to do with the anointing that is on your life? What are you going to do with it? This is a reset to a start this afternoon. Blessings of the Lord on you. Okay, I release dreams and visions and miracles in your life, in Jesus' name, amen. I love my church. A few days from now, we'll be in the conference. A few days from now, we'll be in the conference, and uh, uh, it's going to be supernatural. It's going to be supernatural. Okay, so, and I told you, Bethel, I don't want to be here by myself. Every minister, every leader inside this church that don't sign up, I pray that your car ties all go flat. Pray that when you eat your food, it don't taste good. I pray that your water heater don't get hot enough for you to take a shower until the meeting is over. We have it hard in the meeting, you should have it hard where you are. <laughs> what a kind, kind of man is this? Yeah. Ray Charles said, what kind of man is this? Yeah, you know, this is a holy man telling you that this is our season to restart, to reset, so we can start. Amen. All right, I'm done. Uh, 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 let's prepare ourselves for our tithe and our offering on this morning. Woo, I still feel visions and dreams. You're going to sleep well, well with a mandate.
Four ways to sow your seed. praying Lord search my heart while I'm down here praying Lord search my heart oh while I'm down here praying Lord search my heart oh you know when I'm right you know when I'm wrong you know whether I'm right or wrong. Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving BethelFamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign BFWC 515. Or mail to 515 Dow Street, Durham, North Carolina 27701. Cash App, dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Oh, search me, search me, Lord. I said search me, search me, Lord, search me. I said, search me, search me, Lord. Search me, search me, search me, Lord. Oh, you know, Lord, whether I'm right and you know, Lord, when I'm wrong. You know, Lord, whether I'm right and you know, Lord, when I'm wrong. Tonight we open up the week with prayer. Fridays we close the week with prayer. Take a screenshot of this so you can be a part of this great prayer group that has prayed us through this year and almost 10 months after. It's a blessed thing. Get your prayer request on the altars. Prayer at bishopbloomer.com. Get your prayer requests on the altars. We're gonna be believing God for great and mighty things, a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Remember on Wednesdays, we have the food giveaway here at Bethel Family Worship Center. All right, call if you have a need. I know that when we help the needy, sometimes we have to help the greedy. But uh, if you have a need, we wanna be a blessing to you. We have now ministered to thousands, we can say tens of thousands of families because of your faithful support in our food giveaway. Thank you so much. I always wanted to do this and we're happy that we're able to do it now in the name of Jesus. Four ways to sow your seed. Your Taroma seed also. Give the priest a portion of your dough that he might consume it, that the glory of the Lord would not depart from your house. And remember, once again, the conference is coming up and I want you to register to be a part of it. I'm saying to all of Bethel, don't leave me here with visitors. You be a part of this mighty move of God. I know you will. Thank you so much in the name of Jesus. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain 
and abide with you until we meet again. Sweet dreams and sweet daydreams shall rest upon you as God gives you the ability to see tomorrow. God bless you. Oh, you know, Lord, rest the right.